We are continuing the series of how to mix live music. Thanks for joining me on part seven, where we'll see how a small button can be a big help. It's the high pass filter. So our first question, what is a high pass filter? Well, it's one of the most useful tools on a live mixing console, as it leaves all the high frequencies alone while filtering out the unnecessary low frequencies. Common corner frequencies seen are 80 hertz, 100 hertz, or 120 hertz. This means frequencies above that are safe, while the further the frequency is below that, the greater the level reduction will be. MGP mixers use a high pass filter set to 100 hertz. So a frequency of 95 hertz will be reduced a little, while 40 hertz will be reduced a lot, and 20 hertz will be practically non-existent. For reference, the lowest string on a bass guitar is normally tuned to around 41 hertz. Why is a high pass filter useful? Microphones on stage will pick up many low frequency sounds from sources other than the intended instrument. For example, mics intended for cymbals will also pick up kick drum sounds. Mics for an acoustic guitar could also pick up bass guitar sounds. And there is the proximity effect of microphones. When they are close to a source, they will pick up an unnatural amount of low frequency content. If all this is amplified, it will create a messy mix, lacking clarity and definition. Too much low frequency content can mask the higher frequencies, taking enjoyment away from the intricate rhythms and melodies in the music. So before you start creating your live mix, always check the status of the high pass filter switches. Activate HPF for every input channel except those for low frequency instruments like kick drum and bass guitar. For instruments like a piano or keyboard, which cover a wide frequency range, including under 100 hertz, you should consider the situation. In a small musical group without any bass instruments, it could make sense to keep the high pass filter off. But in a larger band, I would apply high pass filter to the keyboards, allowing the bass guitar a little more space for itself. Listen to these two audio clips. The first one is eight channels of live vocals, brass and percussion mixed without any EQ or high pass filter. Only gain, fader levels and pan have been adjusted. It's been forever and a day Since I heard the words they speak. The second is the same mix with high pass filter applied to all the channels. Notice the difference in the low frequencies of the background sounds from the other instruments on stage. It's been forever and a day. Actually, for those audio clips, I used the TF3 digital mixer. Why? Because its high pass filter has an advantage. Variable frequency. When you enable high pass filter in the channel EQ screen, the default position is 80 Hertz, lower than that of MGP. But for some channels, I raised it as far as 200 hertz to clean up the sound further because the vocal mics are picking up so much of the drum kit. When mixing live, it's all about eliminating the frequencies you don't want. Cut them out to make a clean sound. It's those low frequencies that are more likely to resonate around a room. So cut them out of the channels where they are not needed. Listen to each channel by cueing them in your headphones. Increase the high pass filter frequency 
until you can hear it starting to affect the sound of the voice or the instrument. Then take it back down a little. So that's the high pass filter. Small, but essential. In the next video, we'll take a look at the various types of EQ available on most popular analog and digital mixers. We've got loads more to learn about. See you then. Thank you.